Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello and welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Today, my special guest, Kenny Ketchens? Kitchens. I'm so sorry. I, I'm notoriously bad with names. What's your last name, sir? It's Ketchens. And it's, Ketchens. I get that all the time. It's an, it's an odd last name that comes with a pretty unique story. Oh, okay. Well, you're unique in yourself. We might actually catch a glimpse at Kenny's darker side because Kenny has a podcast called Dr. Evil. And on the Dr. Evil podcast, actually, I'm sure there's a long name that, again, I've forgotten. This is a terrible way to, I usually vet my guest most thoroughly. And today I've, I've, you know, this was spontaneous. Thank you so much for being on the show with such last minute notice. Well, spontaneity is the spice of life. Okay, so I'll take that as I'm forgiven. <laughs> you are. So, um, what is the official name of your podcast, sir? Just so The quick. official name is the League of Villains. The League of Villains. And you portray, or your online persona moniker, is Dr. Evil. But... Before we talk to him and we get the proverbial helmet on, now if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see this lovely helmet and the alter ego as Dr. Evil himself. And if you're just listening to the podcast today, we'll try and stick with Kenny as long as we can. But a question for Kenny first. How did you first know that you were a geek, a nerd, one of us, one of us? It was actually not until later in life. I always just thought that I was... I just like sciencey stuff, and it wasn't until probably my mid twenties when I started engaging in fandoms, just started becoming more popular, that I started realizing that you know I'd probably been a nerd the whole time. Really, was there yeah. a, was there a divining moment or a gateway drug for you personally that got you into sci-fi and the world of science itself? Growing up we always tended to live outskirts of town. So there wasn't really a lot of, you know, going to other kids to play and stuff. So I spent a lot of time reading uh, and watching science fiction movies. That's what my, my parents were into. Oh yeah. No, I, I, it, I feel you like dad did watch the hockey game, but we grew up, my brother and I grew up like watching science international as well as, you know, the news or that type of thing. So no, I, I totally get it. Oh, yeah, my father, it was either an old Western or a science fiction movie. Those were my only two choices. <laughs> um, are you a gamer by chance? Do you uh, mosh the airways, the Xbox, the PC Master Race, PS2? Do you have uh, any of that led you into world of sci-fi and fantasy? Well, I had an older brother that played Dungeons and & Dragons, and I was never old enough or cool enough to play with him. So I had to use the single player role player games on the PC or, you know, whatever console I had available at the time to, to really feel my, feel my need. Do you have a favorite? I have absolutely loved Planescape Torment. It just came out again on Steam and I had to snatch it up because I had missed that game so much. Now, Planescape, are you talking about the expanded universe of Forgotten Realms that they turned like after Baldur's Gate and then all those came out, they had the Planescape games? Well, it's a single-player RPG based in that that world and rule set, and it you know it's just a, an arc within that that realm. And yeah. I've just really liked the story and the characters and the mechanics. Yeah, they're actually been pushing um, Baldur's Gate three, and it's a bit long time. Like the graphics on your uh, Windows ninety eight computer played Baldur's Gate, which led to all this all the the spinoffs and then into Planescape. Now, if you're not familiar, um, Forgotten Realms which dominated second edition and then third edition Dungeons and Dragons in 3.5 had this, had the outer planes, you know, all the other dimensions and some were fire, some were water, some were all the abyss and this type of thing. And they had this idea of a hub of all these connected planes and a city, I believe called Sigil or Signal, if I'm right. Yeah, Sigil, the, the Sig city of doors. So yeah, the Sigil, city of doors. And all the guards were like 20th level fighters and it was good luck but it was that epic um it was almost like stepping into a massive eye-opening men in black show or just like the the multiverse of spider-verse beyond and this came out i don't i want to say the early 90s and it was a real it was his own genre within the D, &D world that was sci-fi fantasy like we're talking 
beyond the next dimension stuff. It was really mind blowing. And then they turned it into a video game so that someone like Kevin, who wasn't cool enough to play with his brother, could experience it through joystick and PC. Uh, which brings us back to my uh, next question. How long have you been playing like video game RPGs since you were little, little or? Uh, trying to think, I think Nintendo came out when I was maybe seven or eight and uh, the Dragon Warrior series for the original eight that Nintendo was probably my first RPG. And I've been hooked ever since. Cool. And then you got into Planescape and your brother's still like, get out of my room, you know. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so then we fast forward to now, and not only had you decided to become a content creator, your content is what I'd like to say pretty original. Uh, but before we get into your subgenre, what made you switch from the 99% of today's consumer wanting to be entertained? Switch, click, switch, click, switch, click, you know, attention deficit, click on this, click this bait to actually becoming a content creator creator and choosing a podcast and going to town and devoting a lot trust me i know this a lot of time to try to pull off that particular content it was actually my my nine-year-old son's idea oh the man genius wanted, behind you go go on <laughs> he he had dreams of being a youtube star so i hooked him up with a channel and you know he wanted to do all those fancy things, the overlays and the green screen. And so, you know, I would learn how to do these things for him. And he really got kind of put off by all the setup and, and all the, the post-production. And so we were, we were driving around and I was listening to uh, actual play podcast. I believe it was the adventure zone at the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we could do something like that and it'd probably be way easier because it's just sound daddy. And I was like, you know, you're, you're probably right. And I got my little podcasting for dummies book and it's all, it's all just been downhill ever since. So your son is a major part of your show or was he in the early stages like season one and now you're on your own or do we have, do we have Kenny Jr. to, uh, to thank for this? Well, I have five children and the youngest three come in and out. They were pretty prevalent in the early episodes where we, we really didn't know what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. but now they are, they are on the show as my minions. And they run <laughs> some of the social media accounts for me. Oh, that's great. That's great. Keep it within the family, as it were. I have um, I have three kids, but I have one son. And he's 19. And he just like, Dad, that, you know, you can't do that. You can't say that online. <laughs> You're sounding condescending, Dad. Isn't <laughs> it? He's more like a censor. Him and my wife, who is my executive producer, are more like, no, you can't do that. You can't say that. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Fine. Um so you're making your own content. The kids are part of the show. I mean, talk about like a fun thing to do with your family, you know. Um, so now you're investing the time, the money, and yay, you get that great excuse to do something with the kids. It's not time away. It's not a, a dad's secret hobby. Um, my dad was into train set and he built the, the paper mache world and, and mounted and everything. And my brother and I this time were very, very little. And, you know, he had to put a lock and a latch on the store so that we wouldn't go in there and play with this N-Gage stuff um, that, like, it was a toy, like, vroom, 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 you know, and just wreck dad's, you know, hobby, as it were. Um, <laughs> so kudos to you, sir, for managing to spend extra time with your kids and, you know, bringing them into that kind of mindset of being creative. I'm always hearing about schools and stuff that are like, save our art program or save our music program. You know, they never shut down the football team, but they oh save the art, you know, type of thing. The schools aren't getting money. Um, so no respect, man, to a gentleman that's um, taken a suggestion from his kids and went, yeah, we could do this. Let's try this. Let's try this. So now the show is getting episodes in and is evolving. Um, do your kids still tap in or are they just kind of like they're getting older now? And they're like, OK, dad, you know, you're obsessed. You, you do this and they're not around so much. It comes and goes like, you know, we'll be sitting at dinner and one of them will just have an idea. Like, you know, we haven't talked about this on the show and, you know, either they'll help me do the research and, and look up topics or, you know, they'll, they'll sit in co-host with me or for a while we were doing live streams on the weekend. So That's, it's, you know, yeah. whenever, whenever they want to be, I don't want to push them to be on it. It yeah. just so happens, you know, I like doing it more than they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. So how long have you been up and running? How long have you been creating content? 
Uh, 13 months at this point. Oh, so just a little over a year. You're just getting your feet wet, just getting out there, getting no. Well, hopefully this episode, which, you know, your listeners will hopefully enjoy getting a behind the scenes look at the man and the minions, you know, that are uh, posting the show that your listeners enjoy. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more, but by the time we're done, um, do you have other content outside of the show? Is no, it's pretty much the, the show has been my first foray into being creative. And it's been an eye-opening experience. I never realized uh, that this much work and preparation went into this kind of stuff. Oh, definitely, definitely. And now podcasts of every type are a dime a dozen. I mean, even in the small genre that I'm in with actual play podcasts, there is, especially with 5th edition D&D, which we haven't touched yet, it's just so many people going, hey, we have a podcast, check us out. Hey, we have a podcast, check us out. And you're just kind of lost in this sea of podcasts. So... We have always been searching for Angle ourselves, and when I came across your podcast, I was like, I like this idea. It, for some reason, it just reminded me of Dan Aykroyd's Dr. Detroit movie, where they just kind of came up with an idea, and they said, let's make a movie out of this, and the guy was leading like this double life to pull off what he wanted to do, and it's... It's one part parody, one part serious, one part just exploring a genre, or I should say a subgenre, the evil within, the uh, villain. Now, um, just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin is not doing a true crime story here where he talks about, you know, headlines and then pushing the fantasy, the detective thing. Um, some of your subjects I've noticed you've talked about, like there's no place at, like at home only. It's like no place like the lair, and you discuss an evil guy's lair. Um, your your shtick about being a low budget villain yourself and giving tips to other villains so they can up their game is brilliant. I really enjoy the concept. Like just going through your page and reading about what you have, let alone listening, is a lot of fun. Um, and now I'd like you to put your helmet on. Because uh, I need to talk to Dr. Evil himself. All right. I'm, I'm putting it on. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to worry. There, there might be a, a slight uh, Jekyll to Hyde shift here in Kevin's, or Ken, sorry, Kenny's attitude uh, towards me. But hopefully we'll be able to talk to the host of the show himself, Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil, thank you so much for taking a moment to join us in your busy schedule. Yes. Nice to meet you. So I'm, I'm sure you've been uh, listening all up in Kenny's brain uh, about what we've been talking so far. I have a question for you, sir. Do you attend conventions and gathering where, gatherings possibly where fans and listeners could actually meet you in person and uh, peek, well, I wouldn't say peek under the helmet, but uh, come face to face with the man himself? I will be attending the Evil Expo in January. It'll be my first convention at the convention for villains by villains. Really? This, this is a real convention. You're not just pulling my leg, Doc. It's a, it's a real convention. It's a real thing. First of its kind in the, on the East Coast. Oh, and whereabouts is this being held? Uh, Piscataway, New Jersey, the heart of evil in America, as it were. And, and when is this being held? January 24th through the 26th of 2020. Oh, so we got some time. We got like six months to prepare and, uh, you know, patch up the evil mobile and head on down. Well, that's good news. That's good to know. So you heard it here first, six months in advance. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets to Evil Expo and Dr. Evil will be there. Are you bringing some minions along with for signing and, you know, help uh, run the layer booth, as it were, uh, Dr. Evil? Or are you going it solo? I am bringing Spanky, who is minion number one with me to assist in my uh, duties. I'll be doing a presenting a couple panels on different types of villainy. Great. We look forward to it. Can we uh, also pick your brain for a moment to talk about where else we can find you? Now, your podcast, your message to the world, uh, what host are you on? Where can we find you specifically and under what banner? You, uh, Kenny, your, uh, shall we say, host buddy, um, was telling us that it's your show is actually called the League of Villains. Yes, the the League of Villains. The easiest place to find it would be at leagueofvillains.net. There's links there for the Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. Forgive me. So obviously, ha you have your own domain, sir. Correct. All right. <laughs> 
I, I didn't want to presume, and yet I'm terribly sorry. I do, do, do not mean to offend a uh, villain of your caliber. Uh, what other social media outlets do you can we find you on? Are you on YouTube? Are you on Twitter? If someone wants to engage or get some personal advice, tell us where else are you spreading your message, sir. I am on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And under what moniker? On Twitter, it's Villain Podcast. On Instagram, it's League of Villains Podcast. On YouTube, I believe it's Dr. Evil. And Facebook has a League of Villains page. Very cool. Very cool. I'd like to talk about your persona, the, the helmet. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you, there's a wonderful picture of, of yourself in said helmet. But if you're just listening to podcasts, the best way I could describe this black uh, and carbon black riveted together uh, uh, imposing helmet is I would have to say in the proverbial description that Master Chief from Halo and Dr. Doom had a love child and together or the day they decided on a weekend to put together a helmet that would work for both men. Um, and voila, that's the best way I can describe the uh, tea visored shaded uh, outlook capped by a carbon black helmet with some rivets, a little bit of side wing uh, vents. And um, is that an actual mount on the forehead for optics or something else? Yes, I have a, uh, a headset that I mount on there. Uh, I can have everything from a, a telescopic lens for me to zoom in on some of my projects, thermal vision. Everything a, a villain could need out in the wild. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, I see. Sorry, I forgot about the backdrop. You actually are among the trees um, doing what you do, per se. Uh, well, I, I know you're a busy man, and you're preparing for Expo. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Dr. Evil. Please do not target myself, my belongings, or my family. And could I possibly have Kenny back? Certainly. You shall be spared at this time. Thank you, sir. You're most gracious. Kenny, are you still with us? Uh, I'm back. Uh, hi, hi. I, 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 that must be exhausting for you to have someone sort of take the helm uh, when the helmet goes on. Are you okay? Uh, I'm good. It's, it's actually quite liberating letting that part of me out. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. I, I'm no psychiatrist, psychiatrist, and I, I won't delve into that personal aspect. But I do have a few more questions for you, Kenny, um, if you don't mind. Some very personal questions. Uh, what do you do for a living? Besides being I a father a, of five, that's that's exhausting too. Well, I mean, they're they're from twenty four to six, so I mean, at this point, they're starting to become self sufficient. So it's just you know, they need me for money. Yeah, yeah. At uh, six, they get their first weapon. You know, twenty four, they'll be asking you to like to have their own lair or something. I I, I understand. Um, can you talk about possibly your latest project on the show? What you've been delving into lately? Or what you're gearing up to do? We are gearing up to start doing more interviews uh, and talk about some more interesting topics. I believe the next one is going to be historical villains. Uh, and we're going to compare them to fictional villains so that people might be able to understand the context a little bit more. Oh, cool. So sort of comparing someone like Ivan the Terrible that people really don't know about, but they did name the man terrible with perhaps uh well i wouldn't go so far as to say something as campy as like a Fortnite villain but you'd be surprised where artwork and concepts or catch lines come from is that the type of thing we're going for or you're going into something more controversial like uh anyone with a short little mustache under his name under his nose uh is comparable to a super villain of world war ii well, we're definitely going for some of the more common na names. So I think one of them is we take Napoleon and compare him to Darth Vader because they, they are similar in a lot of respects. And I actually have a, uh, a history buff coming on the show to, to help me flesh out some of these historical figures. Oh, cool. Now, is this a series within your series? Is this gonna, you're going to run through as many as you can? Because this sounds like a good 6 to 12 episodes at least. We are going to revisit it multiple times. Uh, a few episodes ago, we had a, a history major come in and talk about the evolution in 
medieval literature of villains, whereas I had thought they would be mainly like beasts and monsters. It was actually, you know, noblemen and poor character traits that were more villainous than, you know, wild animals. Hmm. Uh, you have to forgive me. Our, our internet connection at the moment, because we, again, was so spontaneous, isn't great. And I don't want the unfortunate quality that I've sort of conjured up at the last minute reflect some of the interest and quality uh, of, of your show, Kenny. I assure you that um, if he cuts out on me here or gets a little bit robotic, that is on our end, uh, not on his. So what about the future? What does the future hold for the League of Villains, villains, can you give us a little teaser, a little taste? Well, ideally, I would like to have enough listeners where I could take over the world. I, I feel like that's our end game. Wow, that 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 is an ambitious. Now, you say we, you mean the proverbial you, Kenny, and and Doctor Evil himself. Will there be room for more minions? Some of us to uh, you know not necessarily be crushed under the heel of your boot in this new world well totally we believe in teamwork here so you know it's the strength of me and my minions oh really do you have a dental plan or you know sorry sorry that's uh, you know that's that, that's jumping the gun i don't know if you have flyers for the end of the world or or the world reborn that rises from your personal turning it to ash uh, i guess that would be a topic for another day but so far uh both kenny and dr evil himself have been quite generous not only in sparing our lives, but in giving us their time today with such short notice. So thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's, it's been a pleasure, and I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for today, sir. We will see you next time on Attack of Opportunity. Look for The League of Villains on several podcast hosts, and hey, if you feel like getting your villain on, head down to the Expo this January. Look it up. Google it. It pops right in there. We will see you next time. Say goodbye, Dr. Evil. See you all next time.